this video, I'm going to be introducing you to CSS. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets and this is what we'll be using to style our web page. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new folder on my desktop. You can create a folder wherever you would like and I'm going to name this folder Styled Web Page. Now I'm going to open this with the finder or whatever your equivalent is on your operating system and I'm also going to open this with the terminal. If you are on Windows, you can open it using Git Bash. The next thing I'm going to do is create my index.html or you, you can name it whatever you want. We're just creating HTML file and calling it index.html is just a convention for the main uh, HTML page that loads first for our website. So by executing this command with touch, I create my index.html and I'm going to open up this uh, index.html using my command line editor nano or you could like use vim if you like so i'm going to uh, use vim this time so i say vim dot vim space index.html and this opens vim so to go into uh, edit or insert mode i'm going to hit i and i can start typing so the first thing i'm i'm going to do is add my doc type declaration at the top and add my html element inside this i'm going to add two elements this time a head and my body so the head is just going to have uh, meta information the, that the users generally don't see but it's required for our website to actually function uh, all our actual content that is visible to the users will be inside the body now I'm going to add um, H1 first, uh, H1 for our main heading and inside this H1 I'm going to add hello or whatever title you like and then after the H1 I'm going to add a paragraph. So the paragraph just add a couple of words so that we have enough to work with. So once we're done with this, I'm just going to exit and save my file. Once I'm done saving my file, I'm going to open up this with Google Chrome or any browser so that I can. So this is how the page looks in my browser. So this is just plain HTML. We have two elements and just to add a couple more, I'm going to add a button this time. So again, I go back into insert mode and then before the body after, or after the P tag, I'm going to add um, a button and I'm going to call this button login. So I'm going to save it and when once I reload it, I should see my button over here so i have a button by default it's the styling whichever browser you have so if you are on a different browser uh, using safari or firefox or a different operating system the button might look different because it's the default style we've not given any styling yet so we're going to add styles to this and see a different couple of styles that we could add so I'm going to go back into insert mode and the first different uh, method of styling I'm going to show you is called an in inline style. So any style you want to add to a particular element can just be added inline in the actual opening tag. So you add a space and then to add your inline style you need a style attribute. So most elements have this so you add the style attribute and the value that goes into the double quotation is your actual style. So I'm going to show you how to add a color to your font. So this is done by a color property and then the color could be the actual color in its uh, plain words. There are only specific colors that work with this or you could add an RGB value or a hexadecimal value. So first in plain words, I'm going to write blue and then you end your style with a semicolon. Now I'm going to exit insert mode and use um, colon W to save. And then when I reload my page, I should see it in blue. Now I'm going to open the color picker in my, which my browse, most browsers have. If you go to Google, you should be able to see it. So using this color picker, we should, we should be able to pick different colors 
and we should be able to see our hexadecimal value and an RGB value. So this is also possible to um, use in CSS. So I could copy this and I could go back and instead of typing blue, I could type in the hexadecimal value. So I go back into insert mode and instead of typing blue, I enter my hexadecimal value with the hash and then I save this and then when I go back, I should see a green text when I reload. So hexadecimal value, uh, values, RGB values or the actual word that the color stands for, all of, all of these work, all of these work for different colors. So after colors, there's an, another property, which is a background, um, a background color property. So this is more like a highlight. So we could add background dash color. So generally if it's two words, they're split by a uh, dash. So again, the, the different properties are separated by a colon and background color also takes in a color, which could be just a plain color. Uh, one of the default colors supported a hexadecimal value or an RGB value. So this time I'm just going to give gray. So you can see that the entire uh, background has been highlighted with gray. But a few things to notice by default, when you load your HTML page, you see this kind of margin. We, uh, we just added our heading first, a paragraph and then a button, but we still see some spacing in between them. And if we didn't want the spacing, if we wanted to add it manually to our specification, then there are a few changes we have to do. And one more thing to notice our text ends here but our highlight continues to go throughout the page. So to change this, what we could do is go back into insert mode and the second type of styling that I want to show you is by adding the style in our head of our document. So first we have to add a style element and inside the style element, you have to access different elements or IDs or classes using the a specific notation. So if I want to identify all H1 elements in my document, all instances of H1, I want to identify and apply a specific color to them. I could select it using H1 and I could add all the styles inside. So generally I'm thinking my documents only going to have one H1. So all my styling could go inside here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my color. I'm just going to call this green for simplicity. And then I'm going to add a background color of gray, the same colors. So we've added a style at the top. Now, since we've added the style there, we don't need to add the style in line. So I'm going to delete it. So I should be able to save. And when I reload the page, I shouldn't see any change other than the green, the shade of green slightly changing. So that's the first thing we have to do. So we know how to add inline styles. We know how to add styles in the head. Now to remove this uh, margin and to make sure that we can add it um, custom to our desire, I'm going to go back into insert mode and in our style, I'm going to identify one more element and this is going to be the actual HTML and the body element. So for HTML and body and this is one more thing to note, you can add styles for multiple elements at the same time by separating them with a comma. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the margin property and the padding property. So I'm going to set margin to zero and padding to zero. Now, if you want to set this anything other than zero, you could set 10, for example, but you have to specify unit, which is generally pixels. So PX for short. So we just want to set this for zero for now. So I exit insert mode and uh, hit colon W to save. Once I reload this, we should see that it's gone, but we still see some uh, margin at the top of the page. Now this could be a problem with our um, H1 tag. So I'm going to go back into insert mode and try to remove any margin or padding for my H1. So we see it's gone. 
now we could manually add our margin and padding uh, to whatever specification that we want now the first thing that i want to do is show you how to style a button now so for a button there are different ways we can style it so but before we style it i want to show you what ids and classes means so ids and classes just give us another means of identifying different elements or specific elements now ids are unique that means and any id that we add can only be given to one particular element so if i give an id called hello i can't give the same id hello to my p element for example anywhere else so ids are specific but for example i have another p element and i'm gonna call this hello and let's say a h2 element sorry h2 same closing and opening i could add a class to this similarly how i add an id but i could add the same class for multiple elements so for the p all the p's all the h2's i could add the same class and that's okay but adding the same id doesn't work an id can only be add once they're unique so i have added my ids i have added my classes now similarly how we identify elements in my css using the actual element name i can identify them using my ids or classes so ids are i start uh, they start uh, they begin with a hash so i say hash hello that identifies the, all the elements with an id of hello that's just one element and inside this we can add our styles different properties we want as we want so this is a button right now i'm going to first give this some padding of 20 pixels i'm going to give it a background color of white i'm going to give it a border of one two two pixels or 1.5 pixels a solid border of black or let's say gray and we could uh, give it a color of brown that's a text color we should let's just see how this comes out until now reload my page so we can see it's given some padding we've had our border and we can see our text colors brown now to further work on this my padding doesn't have to necessarily be all sides equally it could be a specific padding for example i could say padding dash bottom and instead of 10 pixels i could say 10 sorry 20 pixels i could say 10 so going back we see that the bottom has a slightly smaller uh, padding than the rest of the sides another thing that we could do is change our font weight so my next line i could add font dash weight you could give it a specific value you know 100 or 200 that depends on what font you have installed but i'm just going to say bold so there are many different properties that you could add this is just an overview of the few properties that you could add um, but one last thing i want to do is show you how to add um, classes and then show you the final method of actually adding um, css in a different way so we had a class over here and that was called hi we could uh, identify classes by adding a dot before the class name and then similarly we could add any style we want so we have uh, three elements with the class hi and what i'm going to do is i'm going to um change its font so i'm going to say font dash family and i'm going to say arial so there are a few fonts which come default to the browser any other font you want to add you have to download the font and manually reference it below this you should see the change in font so there's um one last thing that we're going to do and that is take all our styles out of our html and actually put it in its own um pay uh it's in its own file so that our html page doesn't get too cluttered so the first thing i'm going to do is exit all modes and i'm going to try and copy this
content so actually i'm going to close my um vim editor using colon q and i'm just going to print the contents of this file now i'm just going to manually copy all my styles and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a new file called style.css it can be called anything just make sure the extension of the file is css sorry um touch dots touch style dot css and then again i'm going to open my editor of choice insert and then add this so when you insert the styles you don't have to um de definitely the formatting looks different because i've copied and pasted but the thing is you don't have to add your style element this is just the css so this is fine i'm gonna exit the mode um save and close now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go back into my um index.html and i'm gonna go into insert mode because i've got to delete you don't have to go back in insert mode i'm just a beginner to vim but the uh, thing to know is in Vim, um, in HTML, you if you want to add your styles, they go into this um, style element. In CSS, you don't need them. But we've added our CSS file. It's definitely in the same folder. But how do you access it from the HTML file? So to do this, we have to add a link in our head element or the head of our HTML file. So since we don't have any styles right now, we can remove the style element altogether and instead of our style element we could add a link element this is self-closing first we have to add a rel attribute which uh, specifies what type of link it is and this is going to be a style sheet because it's css and then the actual link to the css file this is just style.css now we should be able to save this and see i uh, hope it works and it does work so you can clearly see so i'm gonna just to prove it to you i'm gonna close it completely and i'm going to just print the context uh, the, the contents of the file and you can see that there's no css over here just classes ids and a link to my actual css so to print out these contents of the css file you can see that we have all the css over here but even though we reload just our html page the styles are still intact and they work so this is how you link your CSS uh, file to your HTML file. And there are much more advanced things you can do. There are much more properties that you can add to style it even more. But this is just the basics to get you started. So this is a small graphic I created just to explain margins and paddings in case you didn't understand. So any element we had takes up the space of a content. So for example, it's just a button or a paragraph. When I add text to it, it goes right in the center. And we add a border to it. So depending on how thick our border is here, it's quite a thick border. So that's the black area. And this area between the um, between the content, the actual content and the border is going to be our padding. And any area outside our border is going to be a margin. So if we want to add spacing between multiple elements, we increase our pad uh, margin. If we want to increase the spacing between our border and our actual content, we increase the padding. So this kind of stuff is used to fix our layout and make it more readable, make it more breathable so that it doesn't look too cluttered or doesn't look too spaced out. So that wraps up my CSS beginners tutorial. Um, I hope you liked it and if you would like to see advanced CSS topics like Flexbox or a full project where we create a complete navbar or any type of header, uh, pl please mention the comments below and I'll try to make that my next video. Thank you.